Hello everyone. I am going to spend a little time in this video talking about the new assessment process and also how to build good programmatic outcomes. Um, as many of you know, we are reviving the assessment effort. Um, we've not really put a lot of pressure on assessment for quite some time, but now it is time for us to sort of bring assessment back, especially given that we have new processes and tools that will make assessment much less onerous than it once was. So I'll talk a little bit about kind of where we're at with assessment. The other piece I want to talk about are programmatic outcomes and uh, kind of best sort of practices in building programmatic outcomes um, and uh, a couple other things that are related to that. So the new assessment process, we are going to assess um, basically program outcomes and that is really assessing the extent to which students demonstrate competence relative to program level outcomes, which is a lot of education ease speak to basically say can students do what we want them to do when they finish our programs? So we created a list of outcomes that were related to the program, and then we built curriculum around those outcomes. We may have revised those outcomes, but now we want to test to see if we believe that these are the outcomes of the program, what, are the, what is the evidence that students are able to do those things when they finish those programs? By doing this, we want to create a culture of assessment in all colleges, and that's just basically saying that we want to assess our student work. Um, we're not going to do this in a way that is going to require a great deal of effort. You're not going to be sitting with stacks of assignments that you've got to go through with a rubric and, and kind of what assessment has sort of been regarded as in the past. But there are new technological tools that we can use and put into place that make this a lot more easy and a much more, um, a much more practical process. Programs in SEPs that already have discipline-specific accreditation are probably already doing this. Um, they have to. Their agencies require them to do it and require them to show what the results of it are. But the, many of the programs in SEPs that do not have discipline-specific accreditation may not be doing this or may not have done it for quite some time. So what are we going to be assessing? We're going to be assessing program, program level outcomes. And again, that is the extent that students are demonstrating competence relative to those outcomes. So we will, we have set program level outcomes. We may need to revise them and that will come in the later part of this presentation. Then we're gonna start gathering information and I'll talk a little bit in a future presentation, I'll talk a little bit about how we're gonna do that, but we'll start gathering information about how well students are doing relative to those outcomes. We'll also set goals. We may have a goal that says for every one of the outcomes in our program, we want at least 90% of our students to meet or exceed the goal. And if we hit that goal, then that's great. Assessment is telling us that we're, our goals, our students are able to do what we want them to do. But if we're not hitting those goals, then that be, may be an indicator that we may, we may need to make some changes, either to the curriculum, the measurement tools, or the program outcomes themselves. So how are we going to do this? We have a multi-step process for doing this, and I'm just going to talk about the first couple of steps. The first step is to review the program level outcomes for all programs. And I have asked the chairs if they have gotten many of you to send me your program level outcomes. Um, and so we'll go ahead and take a look at those and ensure that they're in the proper format, that they are actionable and measurable. And if any aren't in the proper format, then we'll make any adjustments that are necessary. Those adjustments will have to go through the full curriculum process to get into the catalog. Once that's done, if the program hasn't already done this, we can take that set of outcomes and we can map it to the program level or map the program level outcomes to the courses in the program. And what, what we're really doing there is we're trying to identify courses in the program that provide us the best evidence that students are actually able to do the outcomes, this, the program level outcomes. So we make that mapping and we may have, you know, two courses for outcome number one and one course for outcome number two, whatever that works out to be. But what we're looking for is we're looking for assessments built into courses that provide us with good evidence that students are able to achieve those outcomes. So let's talk about outcomes. There are three levels of outcomes. There are course level outcomes, which are three to five things that students should be able to do when they finish a course. There are program level outcomes, which are five to eight categories of skills that students should be able to do when they complete an entire program. There are also institutional outcomes, and that's typically a small number of outcomes that applies to all students regardless of major. Or, I'm sorry, regardless of major. Because they're regardless of major, they are typically pretty general. 
So we determine program outcomes when we first build the program. And that sets the early stage of the program, and it helps guide how we develop the courses in the program. We determine the more specific course outcomes as each course is built. But collectively, the course outcomes should come together to scaffold and support the program level outcomes, meaning that what students learn as they achieve course level outcomes should build up and become the information that they need to know and be able to demonstrate relative to the program outcomes. So program level outcomes are, there's typically five to eight outcomes per program. They are action-oriented, meaning they typically start with a verb. They are clear and concise, don't have any complex language. They focus on skills that are built into the program. They can be observed. They can be measured, although the measurement may be up to the program. They are specific to the discipline of the program. They typically fit as an end part of the statement. Upon completion of the program, students should be able to, and then what follows after that is the verb that starts the actual uh, program level outcome. Here's an example outcome. At the end of the program, students will be able to demonstrate effective project planning, execution, and control techniques that result in successful and high quality projects. Demonstrate can be observed. The outcome is action oriented. It's specific to project planning, execution, and control techniques. It represents a significant skill or skill set in the program. And it's measurable, although the measurement of the outcome may be, may be determined by the program, the details will be determined by the program, and that may not be immediately clear in the statement of the outcome. Here's another example. Understand the history of cultures and civilizations through the 20th century. This one is not action-oriented or measurable. It might be action-oriented in the statement, in that the statement begins with understand, but that's not measurable. So how do we measure understand? So typically, in order for us to know that a student has understood something, we need to see some evidence of it. So wouldn't it be wiser for us just to make the demonstration or production of that evidence the outcome? Here's a way that that outcome might be revised. Describe key events related to cultures and civilizations of the 20th century and tie them to 21st century events. Now it's become actionable, it's become measurable, it still has the same content, um, a little bit more content, but it fits better as a program level outcome. In the same way we don't want to use understand, we don't want to use know, or learn, or appreciate. And here are some examples of how easy it is to convert outcomes that are using those verbs into something that is not using those verbs. So know how to program a user interface using Python becomes program a user interface using Python and learn how to communicate effectively with a range of audiences both in written and oral forms becomes communicate effectively with a range of audiences both in written and oral forms. We also want the outcomes to be specific to the discipline. We might be tempted to use things like use critical thinking skills. That's an important outcome in an undergraduate or new graduate program. But for what purpose? And how will the use of those critical thinking skills support the discipline of the program? We might also try to use effect or try using write effectively. And again, what is effectively? We might want to be more clear on that. And for what purpose? Um, how does it relate to the discipline of the major? Lastly, demonstrate effective organizational leadership skills. Again, for what purpose? And in what kind of environment? And how does it relate to the discipline of the major? But don't be too specific. Here's an example. Write policy manuals for uh, write policy manual entries for ISO 14001 standards parts 30.2, 30.6, and 30.92. It's action-oriented, it's measurable, but it's too specific. And one might wonder, is this a program-level outcome or a course-level outcome? Because it looks more like a course-level outcome. The problem with having program-level outcomes that are too specific is you'll wind up with too many. You'll have to draft too many of them to cover all parts of the program and that just becomes more to assess. So it's better if we are at a level of generality that will cover a set of skills that are part of the program, but not too specific so that it gets down into the weeds. A good tool that's been often used in drafting program level outcomes is Bloom's taxonomy. And this is the revised Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom did his taxonomy back in 1956, and I think this is the revised one from 2001. 
But this chart gives you an idea of kind of what is required at all six levels of the taxonomy, what kind of skills are required that um, students would have to have or be able to do. And when we're getting to the, down at the bottom where there's remember and understand, we're really not in the action-oriented space. We're really not asking students what they can do. We're asking them what they know, and maybe they can recall what they know. We're asking them if they understand, and maybe they do understand, but they still have to do something to show that they understand. So we tend to want to avoid those two levels. Apply is starting to get us to a place where we have things that are observable, measurable, actionable. Um, so apply, analyze, evaluate, and create are the categories from which we could draw the action-oriented verbs or sample action-oriented verbs that we could really use to craft good program level outcomes. That's all I have on program level outcomes and the new assessment process. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can contact me. Um, you can email me. That's the best way to get a hold of me. You can leave a message at extension 1419. I'm not great on the phone um, in the sense that I typically am not at my desk. And, but if you leave me a message, I'll get the email that you left me a message, and I will call you back. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.